Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and what I'm going to do today is go over actually both uh, MLB slates in one video. Um, I'm going to be probably un unavailable for most of the day, so in case I don't make it back, I want to at least give my at least early thoughts on the way these slates uh, rate to uh, rate to shake out. Um, there could be weather, there could be all kinds of stuff, but as of now, um, nothing really to concern myself with. So let's just get going. So with the early slate, it's a you know pretty healthy five game slate for a you know, for an afternoon slate. And for me, the the standout pitcher is going to be Corbin Burns. Um, you have Walker Bueller as you know, ten three a ten three, but I think that Corbin Burns is going to be kind of a standout here, at least according to to my numbers right away. And he's going to be owned as a Result of that, um, I think he's going to be clearly the most popular pitcher on the slate, but that uh, is what it is. Um, I think that I think you should start with him in your cash builds. I think you could also lock him in in your in your DraftKings uh, GPPs as well. It's not the easiest matchup in the world against Atlanta, um, but nonetheless, he's just kind of elite right now and. Uh, the, the top option, the rest of the pitching, uh, I, I currently have it between two guys as my next SP. Um, and one would be paying down for Sonny Gray at 6,700. Uh, that, that seems to work. And the other is from Tampa, uh, Drew Rasmussen. Um, so th those are the two, those are the three main pitchers that I'm seeing on the slate. Uh, if you went down in my rankings a little bit, you'd get to, to Erod and to Max Fried and the aforementioned uh, Walker Bueller. And then, then you're, then you're after that, you're at Dalton Jeffries and things like that. Um, but I would stick, you know, to probably those top three. So Burns, Gray and Rasmussen. Now, if you want, you know, you could try to get different by, by just playing Gray and Rasmussen and double pay down for pitcher. And then you can pay up for some of these hitters that we'll talk about. Uh, and that's definitely something to consider. Um, but in your, in your more conservative cash type builds, I, I would do one of those two things, either Burns and Gray or Burns and Rasmussen. Uh, that seems to make the most sense. Uh, let's take a look at the, um, well, I thought I was going to take a look at the stacks. Yeah, so San Francisco is still at Colorado. Um, they haven't quite left there yet. Um, but interestingly, on this slate, they don't rate really to be as, as big of a, of a layover, you know what I mean, over the rest of the field as they have been over the last couple of days. Um, I do have them as the top stack, um, but not by that much. I mean, I, I do have the Dodgers um, sort of close behind. And, and I also have probably similarly, uh, a similar gap to Colorado. Um, so if you want to play San Francisco, know that you're getting just an incredible amount of ownership. Um, and you probably don't want to do that a lot, you know, with those pitching combinations I, I, I talked about. Um, so you should probably, I would, I would probably pivot down to the Dodgers or Colorado. Um, the, if you want to go a little further down in my rankings and you're going to get a, a big ownership discount is probably going to be Tampa or Milwaukee, but I don't know if you want to be stacking against Max Fried. Uh, so I think that Tampa is probably the, 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 the best like pivot off the pivot, if, if that makes any sense. So this is what's going to happen. You know, everybody's going to play San Francisco. I mean, they, they're going to make sense. And then people that are going to want to pivot off of San Francisco are probably going to play the Dodgers or maybe, as I mentioned, Colorado. Um, but if you want to pivot off the pivot, you can go play Tampa. 
And, and just to give you an example of who I would probably play, I, mean, I can't do the whole lineup for you, but given how we're, we're setting up our pitching, you could probably pay for whoever you want here. They're all pretty cheap. So you got a, Res, a, a Rosarena, you have Franco. He's like the only expensive one of the bunch. You have, um, uh, what's Zanino nowadays, 4,200. G-Man Choi, 3,600. Now, G-Man Choi, lefty, lefty is not a, any great shakes, but, but you know, that'll probably, that might keep his ownership down at least. And the next guy I have actually for Tampa would be Harold Ramirez, and he's only 2,800. So, so you could make you can make a five-man stack work really, really nicely. Now, Erod's been really, really tough. So it's not as if he's it, – it, it's, it's, it's particularly a great spot. But, again, we're trying to get a little bit different and trying to get low owned. So, so I think playing Tampa will kind of make sense. Um, I just want to see what we get out of this double pay down for pitching deal if we wanted to do that. How does this help us if we'd say, you know, Burns, maybe it's just not your day and just pay for these two guys? The only way that that would be worth doing is if you really needed it to get up to the Dodgers, right? Because San Francisco, I believe, is cheap that you don't need, you don't even need the savings. Like, for example, if I went and, I mean, you actually, you could. I mean, I would play Belt. And then say Longoria. I'm just trying to experiment and see what this is going to look like. You got Crawford. You got Austin Slater, maybe. Who the next guy? Austin Slater and, and Roof again. Or Yaz. So, so the point is, is that you know you you can bear, you can you can pay for the highest price. I guess if that makes any sense, San Francisco guys that you would want, and still have just so much money left that maybe you don't even need to do this, you know? So like if instead of doing this, instead of Rasmus, you did play um, Burns. See what I'm saying? Like you don't really gain that much from going Burns down to Rasmus as far as average player left. So it doesn't make any sense really to do that. However, if you wanted to play the Dodgers, where you really would need that savings. Let's let's see. So let's just say we want to play all the Dodgers that we wanted here. That would be, let's say, Freeman, um, Turner. Let's really pay up for everybody. Betts, um, Muncie, and Smith, right? So let's play Muncie and then Will Smith. See, this is where you would need to go down to Rasmus. Because if you stuck with Burns, you'd have 2,800 left. Now, at least, or twice, or now, if you play these two guys, you could, you could pay up for all these dodges if you wanted and make the rest of this work. Um, so I think that is definitely viable. Um, so just to kind of summarize, I guess the early slate here, and this is, we're just going to do DraftKings. Um, maybe we'll do FanDuel. No, let's just do DraftKings today. Sorry, K9. Um, I think there are, again, two real good approaches, at least for me, is I would play either Burns with one of those two SB2s with, something other than Dodgers to San Francisco or Colorado, meaning maybe something like a Tampa. Or if I wanted to play the Dodgers, I'd spend maybe all the way up, fade Burns, and just double pay down for pitching. I think those are two very viable um, GPP approaches uh, today uh, for the early slate. Now, actually, let's do this. Let's, 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 do, the, um, let's do the FanDuel slate. And then we'll come back to the to the main slate. So with FanDuel, uh, the the pitching looks to me to be the same. I mean, 
Burns looks like the standout. And then again, I think the next two options are Rasmussen and Gray. Um, Erod, you know, kind of moves up the list a little bit, a little bit closer to these guys. Um, but it's still for me, Burns, and then followed by Rasmussen and Gray. Now, as usual, when it comes to FanDuel, um, you, you need to see before you start paying down for pitching if you even need to. Because um, usually you could pretty much get whoever you want. But let me see how the, how the stacks rate on FanDuel, first of all. So first of all, is it the same? It's, it's kind of the same. You know, I have San Francisco the best, then, L, then a gap to L.A., then a gap to the Dodgers. And then, and then another gap. And then I would say, again, again, the same deal. You know, uh, Minnesota might be a little bit better on FanDuel, but it's the same thing. Then you have Tampa as that pivot off the pivot. So I think it's very, very similar. Now, the one thing I'll, I will notice is that with um, – on FanDuel, now you only have 33,000 per player. Let's see, let's see, for example, same, same thing as before. Let's say if you wanted to do the Dodgers on FanDuel and you wanted to pay for everyone, you couldn't, right? Because you have – these guys are always pretty expensive over here. So let's say you had Freeman, Betts, Trey Turner, and Muncie, for example. I mean, you could do it, but – but, but you're asking for trouble, right? Now you're at 2,400 a player. But, I mean, let's see. What is San Francisco priced at over here? Actually, they're not – yeah, they're, they're, they're actually priced up a little bit over here. You can't just just, just get up to all these San Franciscos. So it's, it's very similar. So if you played Burns, it does become difficult to play the Dodgers. But what you could do – is let's see what Tampa is priced at over here. Yeah, so Tampa, you could well, you could play a Rosarena. That that he's twenty seven hundred. That's too cheap. But who else from Tampa did we like? Once again, it's the Harold Ramirez. He's cheap, twenty four hundred. So you could do that, and then. Wow, you have you could almost do this. You have no, there's nobody really good. You can play at second base. That's that's the issue. But who says you have to do exactly the guys that we talked about from the Dodgers? Like you could put, for example, you could play Trey at second base over there, and then come back, and then at shortstop you can get to Wander Frank. Or you can't quite make this work, but you almost can. You know, you could just make one kind of pivot, like instead of bets play somebody else or instead of Turner play somebody else and probably get make this work somehow you know so so the point is is that don't see too much reason to fade Burns on on FanDuel you could because you could probably get what you want um if you know and when I, when I say what you want I just kind of just deferring to the Dodgers you know the San Francisco we just don't want to play they're just they're just too chalky um um, not that the Dodgers are going to be low on, but, but the same, but, but they're going to be less on than San Francisco. Um, so I think it's a similar idea is that except on FanDuel, I don't think it's as necessary to pay down to get to, um, to get to those Dodgers that we want. I mean, again, like right now we're only, you know, a thousand dollars in savings away from making this work and all you got to do is replace bets with somebody else, you know, and then, and then this whole thing flies. Um, all right. So that's going to be FanDuel for the early slate. Uh, it's pretty similar to DraftKings from the early slate. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main slate and, uh, and do both sites again. All right. So for the main slate, um, there's a lot of good pitching here. Um, but I think two kind of stand out over the others. Um, and that would be just cutting right to it, right? Would be Scherzer and, and Garrett Cole. Um, 
there, there are other good options, but Scherzer and Cole, at least, you know, the way I'm looking at it right now, really do stand out. Um, and, and they are going to be owned, you know, as, as you might imagine. But the strikeout upside of these guys is, and, and their win equity and all this stuff is just extremely strong here. Um, so I definitely like those two. If you wanted to get cute, the next group I have is pretty all is is, is, is pretty close, and they're all just really different. Like for example, I'll just talk about one guy. I do have Juice Smiley, for example, as as someone as a good point per dollar play. But I mean, he's so. I mean, the way his results distribute, I mean, you just don't get any strikeouts from him. You know, you just I don't think you can play him. Uh, on a slate like this. I mean, I think you're going to need some good scores out of your pitching when you're competing with Scherzer and Cole and others. Like, for example, you know, you have uh, Otani on the slate, you know, and that he's going to be a, a very, you know, reasonable pivot off of either of those two guys. And he's got a ton of upside. Um, he's going to be much lower owned than those two guys. Uh, he, he certainly has a less chance of getting there than those two guys. So these are the decisions that you have to make, you know? Um, and then the next one is the guy we talked about yesterday who didn't make it onto the, off the COVID list, but made it today. And that would be, I think he made it today. Yeah. And that would be Giolito and Giolito at 8,300 um, is extremely strong. You know what I mean? That looks like a really, really good pivot as well. So, um, I'm not going to give you any 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 grief for pivoting off of Scherzer and Cole to to play any of these guys. It just wouldn't be Smiley for me, you know. It'd be Otani, it would be Giolito, and then the next the next the last kind of pivot I would consider would be uh, Kevin Gaussman, um, and he has been been nothing but I don't want to say nothing but great. I mean, he hasn't had all great starts, but he's over 20 every start. I mean, what do you want from the guy? You know, um, except for his first start. I mean, he's he's he has a you know strikeouts, what really strikeouts, eight, nine, ten, eight. Um, you know, Seattle is still has strikeouts in them, so I think he's a legitimate pivot. So, so there there are there are there are options here. You know, I do have Scherzer and Cole as kind of standing out, but if you're gonna want to play, like I said, kind of chalky hitting. And you're afraid of, of eating chalk with Scherzer and Cole. I, I I would completely support replacing either of them or both of them with Otani, Giolito, or Gauss. And all those guys have incredible upside. Um, okay, let's take a look at the hitting. Um, oops, sorry about that. So the hitting on the main slate and, you know, the Yankees have just been, been, been performing, you know, if not completely smashing, they've been performing well enough. They've been doing it with home runs and well, fortunately or unfortunately, I mean, the, 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 the prices are starting to ramp a little bit. You know, we were getting stand at 4,400 pretty recently. We were getting uh judge, you know, much cheaper than this pretty recently. And they're, they're really starting to, to ramp these guys up. And Jordan Lyles makes sense too. So you're, you're having these guys priced, you know, very uh, priced healthy. Let's put it that way. But yet still they're ranking for me as a strong value. Um, you have the Yankees for me. And then the, the, the next best option I have, it's kind of close between, well, there, there, there are three teams from a raw, from a raw run, excuse me, raw fantasy points perspective that I have similar. And one of them is a little bit better value than the other. So those, those three teams are Toronto um, facing a uh, Gonzalez that the next one would be the White Sox facing Granke. And the last one would be the angels facing Dunning. Um, I have all three of those rated very similarly. Um, and then when I factor in kind of price, the White Sox kind of go up to the top of that list. So, so it, it's putting it all together. I mean, I think it's the Yankees. I think it's the White Sox, you know, as, as the top two, followed by probably Toronto and the Angels. 
Um, when I look at the early ownership, though, I do see the Yankees as the chalkiest on the slate, and I then see the White Sox as second. Um, so the thing is, is that do you want to go down to the Angels or Toronto? I think the Angels is going to be the lowest owned of those four. So I think that that's very, very viable. Um, like if you don't want to play the Yankees and you want to play these this 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 chalk at pitcher. And by the way, it's going to be tough to play the Yankees you want with these high price pitchers. I mean, that certainly is the case, um, which is probably why the White Sox are going to be very popular because you can get to them a little easier than some of these Yankees. Um, I also have a couple of kind of hoodoo value stacks here as well. That I thought I should mention. Um, one of them is Pittsburgh. Actually, the other one is the Cubs. I mean, they're both coming out of the same game. So, so what, what I would be interested in is what the, um, is what the, uh, the win situation is like. So, cause if I'm getting a decent projection out of those two teams, it's probably because the wind is going to be rates of be blowing out to some degree. So yet another reason why, if that's the case, I would not play Smiley. So the, these are, these are two kind of semi hoodoo stacks that I would consider. And that would be the Cubs and the pirates. Um, and look, and if you want to play both Scherzer and, and Cole, I mean, that only leaves you 3,800 a man, which is why you might need to go down to this. And even so, and the Cubs are not so easy either. You know, you get Contreras at 5,200. I mean, that's, that's no bargain. Um, the other guys that I have is the values though. You get Schwindel at 2,700. Um, you get Hap at 3,800. You get, um, where's Ortega if he gets in? 2,600. Where's Gomes? You get Gomes in at catcher instead of Contreras. You know what I mean? Um, like if you can get play Gomes instead of Contreras, that's a way to get different, even with the Cubs stats. And now you still got plenty of plenty of room, you know, for other stuff. Um, so the Cubs are a really good value stack to make these double pay up work, pay ups work. And if you're going to go to Pittsburgh, just for, you know, just to kind of finish off this thought, I would go with, uh, well, there's Gamel. There's Reynolds, there is uh, Cabrian Hayes, there is uh, Susugo. Where is he? What position is he? Susugo, he's flat 2K. Even Chavis isn't bad. You know what I mean? Like so, you can you can do full stacks with the Cubs and the Pirates with Scherzer, Cole, and 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 you know, look, these are not the best stacks of the board, but hey, you never know. <laughs> this is baseball. Um, and, you know, you get a pretty good head start with these two pitchers, probably. But um, it's not as if these are the only two pitchers on the slate, as I mentioned. You know, you have all those other guys like Gausman, Otani, Giolito, all, all that really could outscore these top two guys. They're just not going to do it as frequently as these two. You know what I mean? They're just not going to do it, uh, I don't want to say all that often. They're not going to do it more often than not, you know. So it's, it's an ownership thing as usual. And, and, but not only that, but it's who you're going to pair these guys with and you play them both. I mean, you're going to have to go down to like pirates and Cubs and things like that. And you're not going to be able to play the Yankees or, um, or maybe even the White Sox. I mean, let's take a look at the White Sox real quick. What are these guys priced at? If you even wanted to play them against Frankie, um, because the people are going to play them. I mean, you, you look, you still have, well, you got still a too cheap Obreu. You have a too cheap Grandal who always, Boy, oh boy. I mean, he's always, um, he's really doing it this year. I don't know how. Then you got, well, Robert is, is 4,700. So that's not so great. But Moncada, what's he? Moncada is only 3,700. So you can get to some of these guys, actually, which is why they're going to be probably owned. Um, so if you do play both these pitchers you could probably get there with some white Sox. you could definitely get there with some angel uh some uh cubs definitely get there with some pirates let's look at the angels real quick i mean the angels against dunning that's not the easiest matchup either by the way but 
you can get oh, Otani, you have to play. Oh, you can't even play Otani. I, I, I'm not sure what they're doing with that. I'm not sure what they're doing with that. Oh yeah, if you're playing a pitcher, you can't play in the hitter, which is which is interesting, right? Um, so what you got to so what you're doing here is you're playing Walsh. You're, I mean, you're obviously playing Trout. Let's just see what this looks like. So Walsh with both these guys, Walsh, Trout. Is there anything cheap? Um, Velasquez, yeah, he's 2,100. That's really good. Probably always have to play Rendon. So you can do this too. I mean, it becomes a little less, you know, not as easy, but you can make this work. Um, so that's probably what I'm, what I'm thinking, at least early from DraftKings, is that if you want to play these two pitchers, you can't really do the Yankees, but you can do other stuff. You can do the Angels, you could do Cubs, Pirates, whatever. The Angels certainly seems to be the most, most reasonable of them because the White Sox looks like they're going to be highly owned. So, you know, listen, everybody always likes to attack Granky um, with their hitting uh, stack. So um, Angels look like kind of a pretty good play. Uh, let me um, let's me look at FanDuel now. All right. So with FanDuel, um, very similar, actually, Scherzer and Cole at the top and then a pretty big drop to the rest. Um, but it's the same thing. Gausman, Otani. Oh, you get Wheeler on this slate. Uh, yeah, Fan, uh, FanDuel gets you to Wheeler, but I don't think he's as good of an option as any of those others. Um, so I think it's Scherzer and Cole once again uh, on FanDuel. Um, they're going to be owned, but, you know, uh, they're very good plays. If you want to pivot, you can go down to Gausman, Otani, Giolito, same deal. But I think that FanDuel, you're probably better off just for those two, I think. Because um, as usual, FanDuel, you don't really need the savings all that often. Let's take a look and see what the FanDuel um, stacks look like. Uh, sorry, here. And it is, it's similar. Uh, Yankees top, then Toronto, then Angels, then Philly gets into the mix along with the White Sox. So that's something you can do. You know, you could, um, you could play something like Philly because maybe not that many people are going to play them because they're going to be looking at both sites and they're not going to just focus in too much on this, on the one team that's not on the, the DraftKings slate. So that's possible. Um, Yankees, Toronto, White Sox, Angels. I mean, very similar. The only difference would be, would be, would be playing Philly. Um, but let's just see. Let's take a look. Let's let's take a look at Philly just for just for just for hell. Let's see who we let's start with Philly. And let's just see what they're priced at. So Harper, wow, 4,600. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh these guys all look pretty pricey. Uh let's start with the White Sox again. Kind of same as before. You have Abreu really cheap over there. Wow. Then you have Anderson. Anderson's reasonable. Robert, you have to pay for. And then Moncada. So you could you could do this though. I mean, you could make this work with 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 uh with Scherzer. So I don't I don't think there's any need to pay down for pitching over there, same as before. And the White Sox really make this work, especially with the Abreu 2700. That's 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 pretty insulting to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Abreu's prospects. And then the Cubs again. I think the Cubs are a pretty pretty decent value over here. Same as before, you know, Contreras, Hap, Suzuki, Gomes, guys like that. Um, you could definitely make this work with a little bit of TLC, so to speak. So that's pretty much it for all of today's slates. Um, I'm going to try to put a timestamp on these, but it's a short enough uh, video where you could probably get to whatever you need pretty quickly. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.